Yo, what is up guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's video I'm gonna be showing y'all a plug and play bigger brake kit that y'all can install to replace these small calipers and small rotors with these massive ones I have installed on my BMW. As you guys can see, they're so much bigger. I mean, the rotor comes and flushes over the top of the little guard. And comparing that massive caliper size to these tiny ones, not even in the same ballpark. But yeah, guys, I'm basically gonna be showing y'all how to install these huge rotors and huge calipers on your BMW to enhance the braking performance for a very, very affordable cost. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Not only do we have these massive brake rotors compared to the old ones, side by side, you can see that there's absolutely a huge difference in sizing. We're also installing these R1 Customs Performance Sport Series brake pads, and as well, some stainless steel brake lines to basically overall enhance our braking performance. All right guys, so first thing we went ahead and did is jacked up the car so that way we can take the wheel off. I don't think y'all need a tutorial on this, so we're just gonna go ahead and remove it. Like a pro. Now from here, it's extremely easy to replace these brake lines. This thicker line here is our brake line and it is rubber. You can squeeze it and it gives. Connects to the caliper. This little grommet holds it in place here. Then it literally traces around right here. So yeah guys, all we're literally gonna do is remove that little nut right there and then remove it from the caliper side as well. And that line should just pull out of place and it shouldn't be anything complicated. And now opening this kit up, as we can see, this is what it came with. It came with two stainless steel lines came with little grommets to hold it in place. Then it did come with some zip ties and other hardware as well. We're literally just gonna mimic whatever's going on here, right here. Open up our brake reservoir here and drain out as much fluid as possible using a turkey baster or something. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove this little locking nut right here, it's an 11 millimeter. And remember lefty loosey, righty tighty as you're looking at it from this angle. We'll go lefty loosey. So you wanna fit it on and then go this way. And now you wanna be very, very careful with any lines like these because you give it too much torque and you will snap it clean off. But bam, just like that, pull this part out. And yeah guys, these little clamps here, they're gonna be held on very tight. So you literally have to grab it and just pull as hard as you can. Be super careful not to cut yourself on any of this. But yeah, I mean, it's out on this end. Now the last thing is gonna be our connection point to the caliper. Then have your drip pan ready for this as well. Sweet, and just like that, the sand is removed. Basically, we're pulling off our old line because we're installing new brake lines either way. And this is a lot easier because see how we have to twist this thing? It's a lot easier to do it when it's off the car. And so here we have our new stainless steel brake line that we're gonna go ahead and twist right back into place. This is genuinely the best way to do it. It's just like that. And once it gets to a stopping point, uh, we'll torque it down. And this is just so we have to do less work once we're actually going to the car. Sweet, now that we can see this is fully assembled, basically ready to go on the car. So now what we'll go ahead and do is remove the old ones. So here we have the old tiny brake calipers. These are so minute and so small compared to the new ones. If we hold these side by side, we can just see how big the difference is in sizing. I guess the first thing we go ahead and do is remove this little shim clip right here. And you can use a flathead screwdriver, a pry bar, et cetera, just to kind of pull it off of here. Just like that. It's easiest from the inside right here. Now we can pull that little shim off. So first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove these little dust caps located here. And there's gonna be one more on the bottom side, just like that. Get our seven millimeter Allen, and we're gonna stick it in where we remove those dust caps and basically pull off and loosen those sliding pins for the calipers. And after we remove this sliding pin, there's gonna be one more at the bottom, guys. If they're in for a long time and they're not greased, they're hard to pull out. Now let's go ahead and get the one at the bottom. And just for reference, this is where it's gonna be. So here we have the little bleed nipple, then we have it right here at the bottom. So we got, so I can go ahead and do now is remove these 18 millimeter bolts that are holding in the actual bracket. Fair warning, this thing will be torqued on extremely tight. Oh yeah, guys, that thing is torqued on extremely tight. So just letting y'all know that right now. Now we're gonna have one more adjacently at the bottom. And just remember guys, anytime we're working around the rotor, do not put your hand, limbs, or anything under the rotor. For reference guys, for this next bolt holding on the knuckle, this is where it's gonna be at. And it's very handy if you use a breaker bar or something to slip on there. After you break off the initial torque, 
should be pretty easy to remove, but it is on there very tight as it should be. And now you will notice how loose the bracket is gonna be now. You basically wanna support this thing as you take off that last bolt. Now we got that bolt out. I just kinda like to grab this thing and move it just like that. Our old caliper is removed in hand. So we're going to slide off the bracket, keep that. But now you can really see how small this thing is in retrospect to the other one that we have. I mean, this is such a small unit, guys. I mean, really just take a look at it. And what you can do to kind of preserve these sensors is wiggle off the brake pad carefully. We can see if we can scrap the little sensor, if we're gonna need a new one. We'll probably need a new one, but... Oh, no, look at that. Cool, we're actually able to get it off, which is pretty impressive because usually they're pretty melted on there. And we seated our caliper up top, and now we can simply just thread it through. And yeah, guys, our caliper's off. And look at that, look how tiny this thing is. Cool guys, so now with the caliper removed, what we can go ahead and do is remove the rotor for our bigger ones that we have. Guys, look at the size of our 328 rotor compared to the massive, massive size of these 335 ones. I mean, they literally fit like over the top, you know? It's actually insane how big these are. Now with our disc here, what's gonna be holding this thing on is gonna be this six millimeter little Allen retaining screw here. And these strip out very often, so we're gonna be as careful as possible to hold this thing centered because these never get replaced, they get completely neglected. And yeah, you know, like we're just gonna be very careful. Last thing I want is to strip this out. Man, that would cause so many headaches, but you just wanna grab and basically pull, it's kind of tricky, but just like that. There's probably a better way to do it. I feel like I could have just left the bracket on. But yeah, now it's off. That thing's definitely going to get anti-seized at the end. And bam, pull the disc off. Just to show you guys a side-by-side -side of the 335 rotors I'm installing right now compared to the old ones. And then bring the camera back. And there's the new 335 calipers I'm installing compared to the old one. Absolutely crazy. Look at the size difference. It is monstrous, guys. Then obviously guys, you wanna go ahead and put the slot so they're facing slanting forward. And you can see how absolutely massive these new ones are. Hand thread on, a little rotor retaining bolt. Cool, and then just torque it down and make sure you guys do not strip this thing because once it is stripped, good luck and good riddance. This new rotor is, guys, it is worlds larger than the old one. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our R1 Customs Performance brake pads. These are the Sport Series. Basically, I think the best ones you can get for just regular road usage that are very, very high performance oriented. Go ahead and open that up. So I basically went ahead and put on our slide pans, completely cleaned them off. I used a metal wire brush to basically make them as smooth as possible. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grease them. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is flip our caliper over while keeping it protected on this paper. Okay yeah, guys, I basically wanna make sure I don't have to do this again in the future. So basically make sure every bit of metal is covered, nothing is exposed. And we're gonna pack even more grease in there in a minute. And same thing here, make sure none of it is showing through. Because the better these are lubricated, the more smooth braking you're gonna have. So make sure these are definitely all lubricated to every bit, no metal showing at all. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is basically just insert this as it's supposed to go from the front to the rear. Just like that. And now since we fit the bracket into place, we're gonna go ahead and fit our brake pad into place. And now what we're gonna do is take advantage that this thing is completely off and just relieve all the pressure by pushing that piston in. That's gonna make install a lot easier. So you guys basically just put the pad in between the caliper, slid it on, and now I'm just hand threading in the bolt from the back side. So we, now we have the top one in position. I'm gonna do the bottom one because I wanna do 50-50 as I go. I don't wanna just tighten one, then go to the next. So now we have our next bolt that we remove. We're gonna just put this in position while the top is still kind of loose. Sweet so guys, so now we have the top and bottom bolts snugly in position. So I'm not gonna torque anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, since we replaced our brake lines with stainless steel ones, link up above for that. Yeah guys, we're basically just gonna thread this all the way through, sit this thing just like how it was. Now, just like before guys, we're gonna go ahead and thread this thing back on and put the little clip in place, hand thread our 11 mil as we go. Cool. Once we're snug, now what we're going to want to go ahead and do is get a wrench on this end here. That way we don't break out this line. And it was a 14 millimeter line. And so you're literally just going to counter hold. Don't go crazy. This one's going to go inwards. This one's going to go that way. And you're literally just going to sit there and bam, just like that. 
And you don't want to go crazy. Like I said, you do not want to break this line. These are extremely sensitive. But yeah, guys, now we can see our stainless steel line wrapping around and going to the caliper that we installed. And do not forget, guys, after replacing your calipers and the brake lines and removing anything, after removing any of the hardware, you have to bleed the entire brake system. If not, you're going to have air in there and you're going to lose stopping power and you're going to end up crashing the car. So be sure, use some authorized fluid, link down below. And remember, this is not optional. You have to do it. And look how good that looks, guys, with the 335i brake calipers and the rotors absolutely massive monstrous and the stopping power here is going to be instantaneous i already know it but yeah let's go ahead and throw that brake sensor back on i figure everybody should know this but this is where it clips into you literally just put it in and clip it into place just like that make sure it's all nice and firm and yeah good to go guys so we're actually going to get in the car now and now we're going to take the car on a little test drive because i really want to feel how the new bmw 335i calipers and rotors feel Once again, we're here at my favorite road to test out all my little performance upgrades that I put on. and gain some speed, and then we're gonna put these calipers, these new 335 calipers to use. No one's around us, so break time. Woo, these feel good, man. These feel good. The bite is instant. I'm gonna do one more go around, but guys, the bite power on these, I'm gonna pull over right here. Oh yeah, man. Even just braking right here, the brake pedal feels buttery smooth. I can't put it into words. I used to have to dig in for braking power, like absolutely dig in to the brake pedal. And these feel good, man. I'm doing two upgrades in the same day. Stainless steel brake line video up above. Guys, when I tell you I'm not exaggerating, I am not exaggerating. These BMW 335i brake calipers and rotors are probably the most prominent upgrade I've done on the car in terms of feel. Like besides my coilovers maybe, like the braking power is instantaneous. It's buttery smooth. The car stops exactly where you want it to stop and it feels more dynamic. It feels like I'm actually in control of the car. Those little itty bitty brake calipers from before, they just weren't cutting it. I had to really dig in the brake pedal sometimes. These new 335i brake calipers are a game changer, like genuinely. Yeah guys, that's how you do a complete upgrade on your BMW's braking system by getting rid of these tiny little small calipers, upgrading the rotors to a much larger surface area and installing stainless steel brake lines for smoother, more consistent performance under stress. And link for that up above for that video on how to install those. But these 335i brake calipers are such a great upgrade because they're a direct bolt-on, better performance, and you can get them for so cheap. I got mine for about 100 bucks, restored them myself. Link up above for the video on that, on how I made them look from busted to amazing for only about 20 bucks and some elbow grease. Overall, just an amazing upgrade to do to save yourself some money that way you don't have to go out and buy a Brembo kit. This is a direct plug and play kit and overall should offer a way better performance and I will be reviewing them in a later video. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate y'all for the support and we'll catch y'all in the next video with better brakes, not these. Peace out.